Hello everyone, my name is Sean Arnold and welcome to another episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! Legacy of the Duelist Online Ranked Jewels. Today I'm showing off the Toon Deck, sorry about dropping that. Today I'm showing off the Toon Deck which I built on a live stream uh, on Sunday um, as requested by Martin Rules Dude. And I'm going to test it out and see how it works. Sorry that the first uh, couple of turns of this duel were cut off. That was due to the PlayStation 4's 15 minute recording time limit. But um, as you can see, you haven't really missed much here. We've only just in, just really just started the game here. I have two Gemini Elf um, trying to attack Spirit Reaper, and that has failed. So now it's off to a vicious Vix turn. Never played him before, but um, he, I'm gonna guess that he's running a zombie style deck due to the fact that he's using the Bones um, Avatar, and it also means he also put the DLC for this game. So he, he might be pretty experienced, and he might be kind of invested in the game, which is always good to see. Um, he's used Rageki to get rid of my Toon Gemini Elf, and I guess that means he wants to attack the Spirit Reaper this turn. And now he's summoned Mizuki. Uh, zombie decks are really, really good at um, recovering monsters from the graveyard, which is thematically appropriate if I do say so myself. It's a shame that the game has kind of gone away, that um, any deck can kind of revive so many monsters from the grave these days. But um, I really like the way they managed to pull it off with the zombie deck because I thought that kind of suits the idea of them being zombies. So if I sound a little bit nasally for this episode and uh, maybe probably the next couple of episodes, uh, first week of Jan uh, 2016 and I'm already getting a cold. I really, really hate being sick. I hate it more than anything else. But, um, you know, life goes on and I'm still going to keep on doing what I do. And um, yeah, there's nothing I can do about that. Now, I was really excited about this deck because I thought I came up with a brand new combo, and that is to use a Monarch Stormforth combined with Tribute 2 monsters. Because if you don't know, the way that Tribute 2 monsters works is that they're special summons, but um, you have to tribute a monster in order to special summon them. And I thought, ooh, maybe I can combine that with a Monarch Stormforth and use it to kind of control my opponent's field. So, what I'm doing here now is I'm special summoning Photon Thrasher. I've already used the Monarch Stormforth. I'm playing too well, thinking, okay, here we go, let's special summon two summon skull. And um, as I go off to do so, well, you're going to see here any second now, I can't choose my opponent's monsters. And I was completely baffed at this point. I was like, what, what, what? Why isn't it working? Is it broken? Did they make a mistake in the programming? And no, it was completely my fault. So here was my mistake. The Monarch Stormforce specifically says that you must be doing it for a tribute summon, it can't be just for any type of tribute. Now, I thought that the Toons uh, special summon was considered a tribute summon, but no, it's not exactly that way. It just says, you must special summon this monster and give up tributes as if though it was a tribute summon. It's not technically a tribute summon and therefore, I can't use the one at Stormforth with these Toon uh, tribute monsters. It really, really sucks that it doesn't work. And um, yeah, this whole duel was kind of a botch. So um, from this point onwards, this duel was kind of boring in my opinion. It, not a lot happens. Um, I'm going to be fast forwarding up the rest of the gameplay for this footage. Because um, normally, even though I would test my decks out several or many, many times, uh, at least 10 times before I make any changes, I'm going to go back to the deck shop and make some changes to this deck here. So uh, by about now, the video should be, the match should be coming to an end. And uh, Vicious Vic should be beating me. Uh, his deck was really, really cool. I think um, I really liked the way his zombie deck worked and the way how all of his monsters got changed into zombies so he could bring them back as if they though they were zombies. But um, I'm gonna now go cut over to the deck edit mode and we're gonna have a look at ways to improve this two deck. So uh, let me catch you on the next cut. Okay, so here we are back in the deck edit mode, looking back at this deck here and what the problems were that I encountered and found. So, obviously the biggest problem here was the Monarch Stormforth. I was really excited to use this as a combination card with Toon Summon Skull and Toon Dark Magician Girl. But, um, unfortunately it's not going to work because they're not Tribute Summon, so those have to go. And the other card which I really took out was the March of the Monarchs. That also had to go because it is dependent on Tribute Summons. So... Where do I go here from this deck? Well, there's a couple of ways which I could go and I thought about. And um, one of those ways, or one of the easiest ways to go is that I could increase the number of Soul Exchange. Because unlike the Monarch Stormforth, Soul Exchange is um, not dependent on Tribute Summons. It's just any types of Tributes. And therefore, that would still work with Cards at the Two Summons Goal. 
Now, I'm starting to feel at this point that this deck is going in two different directions. You've got a big focus on using your opponent's monsters to be tributed, but then you've got other cards such as two Gemini, Elf, and two Goblin Attack Force, which has nothing to do with that whatsoever. So, um, the deck is starting to feel a little bit split down the middle. And therefore, I have another deck here on another example of where I kind of just brainstormed some ideas on what would be better suited to these types of cards. If I start off with the tribute style of cards, um, if I wanted to continue focusing on using two Dark Magician Gale and two Summer Skull, um, I could use more copies of Soul Exchange, as I just said, and Snatch Steel. I could also use copies of Scapegoat to also fill up my field because these monsters are special summons and they can use tokens for um, trib um, special summons because they're not technically a tribute summon, so that would still work. In addition, because of all the dark monsters in this deck, I could also use a Lure of Darkness, which would be good. And um, in case I didn't really want it to be stuck to just uh, high level monsters, I could also use this with two Cannon Soldier, who has the same effect as regular Cannon Soldier in that you can tribute one monster to inflict 500 damage to your opponent, but he's not a high level monster, so I can normal summon him quite easily. Plus, he doesn't need too well on the field in order to be brought out. As well as this, I also did a bit of farming and I got more copies of Ghost Trick Jack Frost. And uh, those can be used in the same way they use in Monarch decks as well as Battle Fader to stop my opponent from attacking and uh, have a monster on the field so that I can then tribute it. So that's one direction this deck could go. If I were to focus more on cards like 2 Gemini Elf and 2 Goblin Attack Force, however, um, this deck would need to go in a different way. And um, what about ideas? Uh, something I didn't realise with um, all of these two cards is that even these big monsters here, even the older ones, they also summon from, uh, what do we call it, summon sickness, in that they can't attack the turn they are summoned. Now, that's a real downside. It really, really sucks that they can't attack the turn they are summoned. They're hard enough to bring out as it is, especially these ones here, which are tribute monsters, or technically not tribute monsters. Um, not only do you need the resources on the field to be able to bring them out, but you also need two worlds to bring them out, plus, in addition, um, you need to wait one turn before they can attack. That could be mitigated with the use of skill drain, and uh, that, that that could allow them to return uh, or to uh, just attack the turn they are summoned. However, you're still putting more restrictions on yourself in order to you need to set that all up. And I really, really hate decks that rely too much on being set up because it makes them inflexible. So uh, let's talk about what this bottom set here. What I thought about for this bottom set here is that it's. If I'm going to be normal summoning these monsters and they can't attack the turn they're normal summoned, I could be a bit more creative and uh, work, try to work that into the aim of the deck and with, uh, make it part of the advantage of the deck. That led me to think about Future Visions. Future Visions is a field spell card and what happens is when a normal monster is summoned, you have to remove from play that monster. Then during your next standby phase, the controller who summoned that monster returns it to the field in attack position. That's really, really good. Because if I can't some, um, work with these monsters anyway, or attack with them, they'll be taken off the field. And that also covers another big, another one of my big problems with the two monsters, is that, sure, you can bring them out and you can summon them and they'll be on the field, waiting to attack on the next turn, but then you've got to protect them for that turn, so that they're not destroyed before they can attack on the following turn. By using future fissures, it takes them off the field, out of play, and uh, means your opponent can't really hurt or attack them. The downside to this uh, oh, is that future visions, if future vision is destroyed, your monster will be permanently removed from play before they can get back. So, kind of a kind of a downside there. Similarly, we also have stumbling. This is a card which doesn't see much play. You used to see a lot of play in cloud control decks, but um, it, you don't really see it too often. And how this card works is that any monster that is normal summoned, flip summoned, or special summoned is changed to defense position. So this kind of uh, works with the idea is that if we're not going to be attacking, let's force ourselves into defense where we are protected by life points and not just kind of vulnerable. Not really great with these monsters, their defenses aren't really that good. In fact, they're really weak with defenses, but at the same time, it does work against my opponent. So um, my opponent, if they're trying to swarm the field, they won't be able to attack straight away either. Both of these cards kind of achieve that objective. On top of that, if I'm focusing more on the normal summer monsters or these, I could use lots of copies of Vanity's Emptiness, which will restrict both players from special summoning. And I can't really try to use that too much in this deck at the top, because uh, 
well, most of these monsters need to be special summoned in order to be effective. So, the deck could go to one of two ways here. And um, I, re I already made a deck, or I made my decision. And the way that I'm going to take this deck is in this follow it means here. And I'm going to focus on Gemini Elf and two Goblin Attack Force. The reason why I want to focus on that is because um, I think this style of two deck has just too much setup work for it. Let's say everything was perfect and the world was the way I wanted it to be and I wanted to bring out two summoners goal. And I, let's say I didn't have skill drain on the field for that matter. For me to use two summoners goal, I could use soul exchange, get rid of my opponent's monster and bring him out for free. That's fine, assuming I have two world on the field. Then I have to wait one turn on top of that in order to attack with him. That's waiting two turns just to do one thing. It's it's kind of really, really slow in my opinion. Um, even worse than that, let's say I wanted to use, say, Jack Frost in order to bring out two Summer Skull. I would have to wait one turn for my opponent to attack to use Jack Frost or Battle Vader. Then I would have to wait on the next turn, I would then have to use two Summer Skull. And then I have to wait again, hopefully that he wouldn't be destroyed, in order to bring out, uh, in order to be able to attack with him. It's really, really slow, and I really don't like it at all. So I'm going to try and focus with these guys a bit more. These guys still have to uh, summon sickness, but uh, hopefully with the use of stumbling and uh, future visions, we can kind of mitigate that. So here's the brand new deck. I have three copies of two Gemini Elf, three copies of Goblin Attack Force, two copies of two Muscle Show because he's a little bit weak. What I'm hoping is with these monsters here that two Goblin Attack Force will do a lot of the grunt work and to be a lot, be a big beat stick. Two Gemini Elf is really, really strong. Plus, when she attacks, she also forces my opponent to discard. So hopefully I can get some advantage off of that. And two, my sorcerer is the opposite of two Gemini Elf. In that when he deals damage, I get to draw a card. To support them, I've got only two copies of Stumbling and two copies of Future Visions. And um, I, don't want, I don't want to run more than that because I'm worried about having multiple copies. And that will lead me to a dead hand. I have three copies of Vanity's Emptiness though, because I think that's going to work really, really well at stunning my opponent and slowing them down. Two copies of Skill Drain, but three copies of Fiendish Chain. This might be a bit too much, this might be a bit overkill, but um, I really think it's important that I have enough cards that are going to protect my monsters if they're face up on the field, and hopefully they won't be destroyed. To help with that, I have two copies of Mirror Force, one copy of Solid Warning, one copy of Bottomless Trap Hole, and then if I need to get rid of threats, I also have Rageki. I have two copies of MST here. I would like to use more than two copies because I could kind of use future visions against my opponent because their monsters have to be removed if they're normal summon two. And um, I could technically or theoretically uh, destroy future visions and then get rid of their monster permanently if I wanted to do so. I also have two copies of Fibbling and Chalice if I want to negate a monster's effect and along with the two co three copies of Venus Chain. But what I like about this is one, it gives the attack boost, so in case I need to get over a monster. And two, I can neg if I negate my own monster's effect, it really doesn't matter too much because um, it will actually help them in the short run. Three copies of two table contents. I'm not even going to bother with two world. I don't really think I need it. Actually, yeah, I'm going to run... I'm going to run two copies of two world and try them out, but I don't really need it. And I don't really like the idea that if my two world is destroyed, all my monsters are going to be destroyed either. But I do like the appeal of being able to attack directly. I'm just going to use one actually, just to try it out, but I don't really think I need it. Now to round out this deck here, I think I'm going to just... Well, I've really got a load of spells and traps. I, I should add some more monsters really to uh, make it a bit safer. But I don't really know what kind of monsters I want to add into this deck. It's really hard to say at this point here. Um, let me think, what monsters would work really well with this deck? I mean, I could just use Fulton Thrasher again and try him out, I guess. But it's not really ideal. But I'm, uh, I'm kind of like losing ideas here. And I'm worried that this video will go on too long, that some of it will get cut off. Uh, okay, well, that's the deck as it is. And uh, hopefully that kind of works out. Uh, I might get rid of Photon Fresher. I might change that. But uh, we'll see when I start testing this deck. So there's the brand new 2 deck. Let's hope it works out. And hope it's a little bit more consistent and stronger than it was before. Anyway, I need to stop this video because I'm scared that the recording will be too long. So I'll see you guys in a few days once I have started testing out this deck. Thank you for watching. Take care.